Welcome back to our fifth session in our seventh sessions program of uh, marriage coaching. In our first session, we talked about an introduction and the biblical foundations in a sacred marriage. And in our second session, we talked about falling in love for all the right reasons. In our third session, we talked about assumptions and uh, uh, expectations and understanding gender differences and different sexual responses. In our fourth session, we talked about understanding uh, the five love languages and uh, fighting disaffection in marriage. Today, in our fifth session, we will be talking about helping couples manage their finances. We will talk about money. As a matter of fact, uh, more conflict in marriage is about money and financial pressures. More domestic violence is about money issues than any other issue. It's important for young couples to talk about uh, this topic before they get married. Respecting each other's money style is important rather than focusing on what is right and what is wrong, just like understanding uh, the different love languages. Money can be something that uh, can improve relationships and improve uh, um, communication, or it could tear relationships down. I will talk about four different sections in this topic. Number one, money personalities. Number two, why people think, do, and act uh, about money. Number three, some communication tools. And number four, the five hot buttons. First, we will talk about the six money personalities. First personality is a saver. The second one is a spender. The third one, a risk taker. The fourth one is a security seeker. The fifth one is a debtor. And the sixth one is a flyer. I encourage, uh, as we talk about those personalities, each person should determine his primary money personality and probably his secondary money personality. First, I will start with the, the spender. This person is very good with spending money. This person might not be in credit card debt or anything like that. What they tend to do is when they get their paycheck, they tend to think about where they will spend their money and what purchases they will do. There are some strengths to this personality. They are fun to be around. They have a good time spending and they are good for the economy. Some of the weaknesses that could be associated with this personality is that they tend not to be the greatest budgeters. I am repeating again, those money personalities are not right and wrong. They are what makes us different from each other. A spender is the person who, when they have money, they will start by thinking how to spend it and how to enjoy it right away. The next money personality is the saver. That is the person who, when they get their paycheck and after they pay their bills, if they have any money left, they will want to save it. Again, there are strengths and weaknesses with this money personality as well. They are good money savers. It's very easy for them to save. Probably they will have a nice retirement plan because it is their natural tendency to save it. On the other hand, they could be perceived as no fun. Another personality is the risk taker. This is the person who wants to risk some money for a gain or by being more aggressive in investment. Often the strengths we could find with this personality is that the risk could pay off. Some of the weakness could be jumping into 
an investment without doing enough research, they may end up losing money because of the high risk. The next money personality is a security seeker. That is the person who is willing to get less gain in order to know that their principal is staying and going to be okay. It is so important for a couple's money security to understand their own and each other's money personality. It's important to know as we discover each other's money personalities to know that they are not gender-based. The next one is the debtor. This kind of personality tends to think of take money to make money. There could be strength here if there is an investment opportunity and uh, it, there could be a weakness here if they end up having not enough money to pay off what they borrowed and get in trouble that way. The last one is the flyer. That is a person who tends to fly blind and not knowing where his money is. A perfect example is a person who doesn't know how much exactly they have in their checking account and they still write a check off of it anyway. Now let's talk a little about uh, how we develop our money personalities. First, we have past experience, which will determine how we spend and how we save and how we work with money as a whole. Whether it is personal past experience or even family past experience that we learn from it is so important for couples to talk openly about past money experiences as it will help them to understand each other's more deeply. With that, we need to talk also about the way we were raised. A person usually either mimics the way the parents dealt with money issues or rebels against it. Another huge one on how we spend our money is societal pressure. It is so important for a couple to discuss together how society influences how they spend their money. We can get ourselves in huge debts because as a young couple, we want it all and we want it now. Many couples are moving in this direction as a result of societal pressures. That brings us to another very important point, which is what are our core religious beliefs when it comes to money. That would affect how we use money and how we weigh money in our relationship. Next, we'll talk about communication. How can we get on the same page in dealing with money issues? Oftentimes, we find one of the couple who wants to talk about money all the time and the other one does not want to talk about it at all. I found that it is so important to set aside maybe once a week, once a month, uh, just to talk about finances. It has to start by identifying your money personalities, then move on to finding what your financial concerns are and what could be frustrating you when it comes to money. Also, having a financial plan to where the money is going and which partner is responsible for each part of the plan, then what happens when there is a conflict or when somebody below the budget, here comes the idea of meeting at the fence. We'll take a break now and uh, we'll uh, come back uh, soon. Coming back to the continuation of our fifth session in the uh, marriage coaching, we were talking about uh, meeting at the fence. This is a place uh, where you could go without a lot of anger. So I encourage you to meet 
within 24 hours acknowledge that uh, you will be addressing the subject but it doesn't have to be right then. Have a cooling period before meeting at the fence. When you meet at the fence, you get to listen, both stating your side and listening without interrupting. Um, I'll stop now for a second to tell you an example of meeting at the fence. Uh, for example, when I go and uh, without letting uh, my wife know that I'm going to be buying a big screen TV or a car or something that is really expensive and uh, I end up coming home surprising her with it but she would look at it and get shocked you know our finances does not really uh, accommodate this amount of expenses so and she's so upset while I thought that I'm doing something that's going to be very exciting at that point we need to stop and I promise her and she would promise me that we're going to come back and we will discuss it again and meet at the fence at a safe place at a safe time and um, after all the uh, uh, immediate emotions and immediate anger would start subsiding now coming up with solutions and compromising then celebrating when you work together and solve your money challenges and conflicts also make sure not to stop each other from dreaming dreaming to achieve any financial goals you ever dreamed of don't stop dreaming but now coming to the final step in this session we need to talk about the five hot buttons number one button is budget there is no perfect budget. It is just a flexible roadmap. But there has to be continuous mutual buying and spending between couples. Also making an agreement that if we have to spend on anything more than certain amount of money, we have to discuss it with each other. First, um, that would save the couple so much pain. Number two hot button, would be investment. We see a lot of conflict between couples over what kind of investment getting on the same page is very important. Number three hot button is future planning. Both retirement planning and college planning are such important topics. Getting knowledge about those are so important. Knowledge is power. Talking through that is so important too. Number four hot button is insurance. That could be disability or life insurance and so on. You need to find what kind of policies uh, are good for you and uh, what might work for your family. The main reason is setting expectations and being able to talk about it. Number five, the last one is charitable giving a lot of couples don't talk about how they are planning to give money away and where they are planning to give it and why they want to give it also the average amount in percentage of their income they want to give it would be very healthy for couples to discuss and talk about it early in the relationship to just get on the same page also as important if not more, the idea of giving in time and not just giving in money. As you talk together about those hot buttons, you grow together in understanding each other and in getting closer together on the same page. This concludes our fifth session. Thank you for listening and until we meet again, God bless.